So by having uh, the, these external files, we open up a bunch of possibilities. And notice it's three files. At the very top is the style sheet. The style sheet is what's giving me the basic gray colors. And with the <coughs> style sheet, I've got the alignment of the header in the center and all of that stuff. With jQuery, this is just like foundational for so many things of the web nowadays. <coughs> nowadays, it's like um, you need that file to really get much done uh, on projects. Um, I bet eventually a web browser is going to have jQuery built in. At the moment, we have to reference it from some other source, but event eventually the, the browsers will have it built in. Just like a long time ago, JavaScript wasn't built in. It had to be referenced as well. Now it's built into the browser. And then we've got the jQuery mobile JS file with some extra, some extra stuff. So we'll see this when we deal with navigation and, and animation and such. But it lets us do all of this great stuff very quickly. What I want to do at this point is I've got a whole section that's existed that I haven't even you know, dealt with. It's about a section. I wanted to create, first I'll create a simple button to go from the home section over to the about section. <coughs> so this section is a whole different screen of content. And we'll do it very simply. So we'll go back to article, the content area. After um, our paragraph there, let's, mm, let's create another paragraph. We could do a break, but uh, we'll just do a paragraph. Inside of the paragraph, we will just write, uh, go to about. That's going to be a link, a button that takes us from this screen to the other screen. It's going to be a link, like we've seen previously in HTML. How do we make a plain old link in plain old HTML? Um, href, or href inside the A tag, so we need the A tag. It needs an href. And so when we linked to some external website, we put its address. When we link to different sections of our SPA, single page app, we have to reference it by its ID. We have pound about. It has to be this way because this is CSS, remember? ID is basically the pound symbol. ID is about. And so I reference it here, pound about. This is going to be very confusing <coughs> as a beginner. No pound symbol there, yes pound symbol here. But they're equivalent, <coughs> basically. ID is the pound symbol, basically. Save it and run it. You'll have a basic link that you can click to finally go back to that page that we've created but forgotten about. So if it worked, I've got that. It's got a little bit of style. It doesn't have the classic purple color that's been around from day one of HTML. It's got a nicer little blue. It's underlined. And then I uh, hover over. Oh, it's got a little rollover color as well. That's built into this Java to the jQuery CSS file. I click on it, and then it goes over to about. <coughs> and I'm kind of stuck. Yes, I have a back button, but when I've got a real app, I don't really rely on the back button. I rely on the navigation built into the app. So we need to work with that. But at least. Did you, were you able to click on that and it took you to About Us? If it did, very good. So if you have a keen eye, did you also notice a little bit of a fade animation? Yes. If this was a plain old HTML link, it would have just been boom, boom. There's no transition. It just, here's the page, there's the page. With built-in jQuery mobile, we have a little bit of an animation, which we can, of course, control and change. But this, this is nothing special. This is a link in HTML 1.0. Let's update it. Let's power it up with some jQuery mobile. For example, we'll go into our A tag. We'll add another attribute. We have the href attribute. We will now add the data role attribute. And our data role is button. Save and run that. Data-role equals button. Check that out.
So if you type that properly, you will see a button with a drop shadow and a little border, centered, little rollover effect. We can, of course, fully edit this to my own company colors later, but I've got a button. I've got a real button without any difficulty. Data roll, button. We've updated the A tag, humble A tag, to a button. And that works because we've got jQuery mobile CSS and jQuery mobile JS file. Basically the CSS file. That's not all. Let's add another attribute. Data dash icon. We can add an icon to our button. And jQuery mobile at this point, version 145, comes built in with 50 icons, such as, let's try for fun, user. Save it and run that. Save that and run it. Save it and run it. little user icon, <coughs> which grows and shrinks responsively to the size of your device, high quality in both PNG and vector format. Basically, it looks good on every screen. Um, <coughs> we'll look at the whole list of these. There's about 50 of them, but here's a couple of others to show off. What if we do home? That gives us a little home icon, perfect for a home button. What else? We've got, um, I always forget, is it email or is it mail? Okay, email doesn't work. When it doesn't work, it just goes blank, so it's mail. I always forget that one. Mail. Yep, it's mail. M-A-I-L. So we've got mail. That'll be great for my app where I can send an, e an email to the developer. Um, let's see, we've got one, what's it called? Oh, there's one called Action. Try that one. Some of these make sense what they are simply by their name. I don't exactly know what an action is until I save it and run it, and then I see what it is. Check, check out what action is. <laughs> I saw that a lot. If, if you've got an iPhone, that looks familiar. If you've got an older version, actually, that's a little action button to like send a, send a tweet or uh, upload it to your account or whatever. So action, the action icon would be nice you know, to send something, let's say. There's a bunch. Uh, we'll do a couple more. There's one called, um, I think it's called bar. It's either bar or bars. No, it's bars. If it doesn't know what you mean, it'll just be blank, because there's a list of 50 of them. And then, of course, we can create our, our own icons later. Okay, but that icon looks good. That looks like I can click it, and something opens up to show you more stuff. We can do that relatively easily in jQuery Mobile. Do. Let's see here arrow dash r <coughs> we have arrow l i think we have arrow u for up arrow d for down i think they're also diagonal left right up left and all of that so there's a whole list of them we'll look at the list later everything that we're doing here of course has been fully documented and we can go look at it and learn about it and all of that but I think it's very cool to teach this piece by piece like this to show you look at what we can do we've been here four days and you might have had zero experience in HTML and look what we can do you might have taken other classes and learned some HTML yourself take what you have learned and look how much further you can go using jQuery mobile um, it's a framework it's a starting point which of course I will update I'm gonna get tired of these colors I want my own company colors and I want my own drop shadow and my own animations we will be able to do that um, but what I want to do is deal with um, this is a pretty this is a pretty cool button but um, 
the result is when I click on it, it goes over to this About Us, which I have not done anything with, so it's just going to be plain About Us. This is one of the downsides of jQuery Mobile, and they're getting better at fixing this. Version 1.5.0 is coming soon, and I'm sure it's going to address this. I've been using it since about version 1.1, and I've seen it evolving, and it's on 1.4.5 at the moment. And uh, it was a big jump from one from version 1.3 to 1.4. We're using 1.4 at the moment. I, you know, the older versions were crude and getting better and better. 1.5, I'm sure it'll address this issue easier. In that, there is no easy way to really do persistent navigation. And what I mean by that is I can create, we'll see in a moment, I can create a nav bar at the top, like a real app. We'll do that in just a moment, but at, at top buttons. And I want to be able to click a button and have those buttons and everything follow me from screen to screen. We can do a version of it at the moment, but it's not as straightforward as it could be. So that's a bit of a downside. Another downside is that technically, because we've got different um, screens, each screen acts independently of the others. So I have not programmed a header, a content area, a footer. I haven't programmed a nav bar yet. So it's plain. And I'm sure with 1.5.0, they're going to make that a lot easier. Um, so we have to take a moment to work on section 2, you know, the about section. We have to work a little bit on the about section to make it look like the first section. We need that header, we need that article, we need that footer. Yes, we can copy and paste. No, we won't. We'll do it the hard way, the long way first, to get used to that. And then we can we can cut corners later. So let's go to our section, uh, our about section. I want to wrap around about us. I want to wrap a header tag. Okay, so on line 24, header close header. And again, this is all optional, but notice how I, I keep indenting where necessary. If there's some element inside of another element, I like to indent for readability. Header. I opened it and closed it. Yes, I know I need data roll and all of that, but I don't want to forget that I need to close my header. Remember, I teach it so that if you open a, an element, close the element, and then fill the details. And the details are, header needs data roll, header. So now at the very least, about us will be in a header area, nice and centered, at the top. <coughs> I need an article, data role, content, and just put something there, h2, something, whatever. We'll fill in the content later. So this is the main section between, it's like the, it's the part in the middle of the sandwich. You've got the, the bread, right, at the top and the bottom, header, footer, and inside is the good stuff. So article is the content, the good stuff. Then after that we need footer. <coughs> I know that it's going to need a data roll, but I'm going to add my tags first. So if we get to close it, slash, a little footer, and I saw from the previous section that the footer is going to float at the top unless I fix it to the bottom. So don't forget, data position fixed. Footer, data dash roll, it's a footer. Make it behave like a footer. Data <coughs> position fixed. And all of this again <coughs> is translated. jQuery Mobile basically looks for something called data roll. And it knows that when it's set to footer, it make it behave a certain way. jQuery Mobile looks for something in your project called data position. Fixed. Make it do something. Make it behave like something. Make it look like something. And um, this is this is optional, but the way I teach it is I'm I'm always going to have h1 as in the header and h4 in the footer. 
because then I can have H2 and 3 within the main content. And I believe technically, according to the specification, you don't even really need a header and a footer. You've seen plenty of apps out there that don't have headers or footers, either or. You can omit them and create in different kinds of designs. It's up to you, but I'm going to show you this way, just so that it's kind of something that we can grasp. Header, content, footer. We'll add a nav bar in the in the, in, a, in a moment. We can add sidebars and panels and all this cool stuff. We just need to use the right data role, the right data element. They're not always going to be data role. We saw data position. And down here, I don't know, status updated, whatever. At the bottom, we can use Java, uh, JavaScript, jQuery, whatever, to program it to make it say something dynamic at the bottom. Right now, this is all static content. It doesn't change. Later we can get complex with databases and animation and tapping in. Eventually <coughs> it's an app taking a photo and having a little counter or whatever. But it's still a little ways off. And now my section two, my, my about section, looks a little bit more like my first section. Hopefully if I typed it right, save it and run it. My home section, click go to about. There's about. About us, footer, something. But I still don't have a way, ignore that you've got a back button there, I still don't have a way within my app to navigate. We'll get to that. So, we can create as many sections as we want, and we can populate them with as much content as we want. It's all going to exist in this one file. And it's still okay to have different HTML files for different sections. Um, you're going to lose some abilities, such as that transitions. And I bet by version 1.5, um, they're going to let you do that easier. Right now, it's, not, it's kind of clunky to have animations. And you might say, I don't care about animations. I just want the links to work. Great. But think of all the apps that you use and think about the user experience they have these little, you know, this little bit of frosting on the cake. Speaking of frosting on the cake in animations, before we create our, a better nav bar, I'm going to create here a better animation. The built-in animation is kind of plain. We have a few built-in ones and we can create our own, but honestly that's a little complex. We've got these built-in ones that are really nice. It's back up to line 17 or so, which is where I've got my button. href data roll button. We will add another attribute here. Another jQuery attribute. So we've got data roll, data icon. Let's add data dash transition equals transition. It is, it's going to animate. We've got about six kinds of animations. Let's do slide. Save it and run it. So add your data transition to your button. Slide. Which part of it? So zoom out. So if you add data transition slide, you click it and your screen slides over. I didn't have to program that or uh, figure out x and y coordinates. It's built into jQuery Mobile. <coughs> and if I press back, it slides back automatically. Um, slide. Let's do, um, in, instead of slide, try flip. Flip is another animation. Check that one. Click on flip to work out. Seems to be working on that way. I must 
Does everyone uh, have this at the moment? Uh, here's another one that always does who's and ahs. Um, try uh, try flow, F L O W, your flow transition. That's I think that's the most extravagant one. Flow. You click it, and it's like you flicked the page away. <coughs> so there's not a lot of animations. Uh, there's a couple of other ones. There's flip and a couple of other ones. Uh, and you can make your own, but honestly, that one's hard, because you do have to deal with animating the page and writing some hardcore CSS. But these built-in ones are pretty good. Um, the um, the project at the moment is a bit of a dead end in that if we don't have a back button, eventually this will be an app, and we're not going to rely on back and forward buttons. That's a web browser. Our apps have navigation built in. Let's add a very simple way from the about screen to navigate back to the about page. Um, there's a full-fledged navigation system that we can use, but let's use a very basic one right here. Let's go over to our uh, About section, and let's go to our header, and we will add an attribute to the header. We've got Data Role Header, and after Data Role Header, let's add, uh, this one's funny, Data-Add-Back dash btn equals true. Save and run that one. <coughs> Data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. Lowercase, of course. Save it and run it. And you just get a little button to navigate you back. So built in by adding that little attribute, it automatically then adds this back button. It puts the right icon. It types in the uh, word back. And the functionality of it is simply that it takes me back. I can make it say something else instead of back. And I can change the icon. I can do all of that. I can fully customize all of this as we go on. Um, but let's, uh, let's work with now adding a more interesting navigation system, a more classic one with, with buttons at the top that you can go from page to page. Because here's just a simple button that I click and it goes to one other page. But what if I've got an about page, a contact page, a, a products page, whatever. I want to be able to navigate from screen to screen like a, like a real app, like a real website. Uh, so this one's going to be a little more complex because it's made up of, of a couple of pieces, but a couple of familiar pieces. Let's back up to the um, into our code. Let's back up to approximately line 13, which in my case is in my header section. Let's add a new line under the jQuery mobile, h1. We're going to have the text h1, and then we're going to um, have this nav bar. We have a tag of HTML designed to hold a nav bar. <coughs> it's called nav. You said this is HTML? This is HTML5. 
and so its purpose is to hold navbar content. By itself, it won't look anything like a navbar. It still needs to be styled with CSS. That's the point of the modern web. Style and presentation is separate. Uh, if you've been around websites for several years, you would do things like use a table to make a design, which is not good anymore at all. You need to use the right tag for the right task. We've got the nav tag. Well, we're going to upgrade this with some jQuery mobile. This needs a data role. So this whole data role is sort of like a, like a shorthand for CSS. And we've got, we've got a, a role in, in jQuery called uh, navbar. And the way that this will work is that we've got um, we've got uh, actually a bullet point list. Um, we are able to create a cool navbar through bullet points, but because of this having data role navbar, it translates it into the navbar that we expect. So we need to create here a UL inside the navbar, an ordered list, list item, Let's say we want a home button, an about button, and a contact button. So this is just the bullet point list, but it will be upgraded to a real navbar because of data role navbar. It's becoming more common even, even in regular web development to create a navbar based on a bullet point list because the theory is that a, that a navbar is just a collection of links. Um, thank you, data oh no, the data role is completely jQuery mobile, which, which applies to either web development or app development. We're using it for the development of an app in the long term, but it's still our first step is to create a, a web project. Now, you don't have to run it yet. We're not quite there yet. But if you ran it, it's kind of looking like this. Not that great yet. It needs a little bit more. But we've got to make links here. So I'm going to wrap the A tag around each of these. Because these need to be links. These need to be clickable. So it's a set of bullet points that need to be clicked. And then they need an href. Yes, if we knew what we were about to do, we could do a lot of copying and pasting to save ourselves some effort, but this is what I'm saying a little bit about. This is one of the little annoyances in, in jQuery Mobile that, at the moment, we, we have to create this navigation element, you know, piece by piece. <coughs> and then um, there's ways to make it a little easier as we get more advanced. And I bet with version 1.5 when it comes out, it'll be even easier. But for the moment, we have to do something like this. And our href for the home screen is pound uh, home, obviously, because on my section page, home. So linking to the home page, the home section. We've got an about section, so it's pound uh, about. And we don't have this yet, so it won't work, but eventually we're going to have contact. So we've got three links, home about contact, 
They're links in a list item. They're bullet points in an unordered list inside of a nav bar upgraded with nav bar. jQuery mobile. Save it and run it. And so if this worked, now you should have an evenly spaced navbar at the top, perfectly centered, perfect amount of space between each button, like a real navbar. You've got then your hover states and all of that, and there's home, there's <coughs> about contact. You can click on about and it'll take you to about, so it's a navbar. It's got upgraded, it's been upgraded with navbar. But then I see that when I go to about, no nav bar. I want that nav bar on all of my pages. I didn't add the nav bar on the about page, so it doesn't exist on the about page. Question? So we're going to do a little copy and paste, but before that, we can add icons to this too. Not just home about contact text, icons. Just like I added icons down here. Data icon and pick an icon. I'm gonna add data icon to the to the to the href. To the a tag, that is. Data dash icon equals home. Cool little home icon from my home button. Data dash icon. We don't have an about icon, but we'll play with this one. Star. Why not? And then we'll have data icon. Uh, let's do. Navigation, just for fun. So we're adding icons to the link in the nav bar. Question. Oh, good point. So we've got about 50 icons to choose from, and the point I was getting about that was that icons have a meaning culturally, and so that little house, to me, means it's a home. It's the button to go home. And that one, to me, looks like a dragon ball. No, I mean it looks like a little star. Like a little star, and to me that might mean about, but we have an icon to show a little info icon, which is simply info. That might work. Some icons have a meaning that when you look at them you get its meaning. Some are a little more generic, like the star. If I didn't put the word about underneath it, what would you think? What would you think about star? What is, what is the star button? Maybe like the latest, <coughs> latest news or yeah. something. Sure. Any other opinions? What could the star mean? Favorites, sure. Bookmarks, something. I don't know. Some of these icons have a built-in meaning and that we can mostly agree with. Uh, and some of them don't. So when you design your icons, when you pick your icons, you don't want to cause a, you don't want to cause user confusion. Okay, with the word about, I can I guess I understand it means about. But without the the words you don't know what it means. And there's so many apps out there that are guilty of that, that they have some icon that you don't know what it is until you click it. And then it doesn't do what you think. So that's a big industry there that's user experience design. Um, so I'm just going to try this info. 
instead of data icon star, I can do info. And that one looks like this, info about. Sure. Now, I chose on purpose the wrong icon for contact. That's like my map icon, obviously. Some of us will say obviously, some of us, you know, that's like the, that's like the ship's compass, or I don't know. So, um, it's actually, uh, it, it, you're all wrong, but it's actually the beak of a bird about to eat something right here. So icons have a meaning. And uh, you can use its built-in meaning, you can subvert, it, subvert its meaning, but uh, you don't want to confuse your users. So on contact we do have mail, but perhaps in my app the, there's not the only way to contact us through mail. There might be send us, a, send us a chat message. So we have 50 icons to choose from, but that's still not going to be the perfect icon for you. And later we can talk about creating your own icons and putting them there. You're not limited to the ones built in. You can design your own and have your own icons. Now that I've got my, my menu bar a little bit more fleshed out, I'm going to copy and paste it into the About screen, because that Back button is not going to cut it. That only takes me back one screen. I want to go to About Us, and if I want to then go over to Contact. So, let's now save ourselves a little bit of effort. And I'm going to copy lines 13 to 19 in my case, which is nav slash nav. It's fully set up, it's clickable and functional, and I want all, and I like all my icons. Just copy and paste that into the same place in the about section. Same place, which is at the end of header. You can put it before your H1 if you want, and it'll do what you tell it. It'll put your icons first and then the header second. That's a perfectly fine design, design decision, decision if you want. But I'm going to copy that nav and replace um, about us. I'm going to take out also this back button. I don't need this back button anymore. I've got a real nav bar now. <coughs> It'll behave weird if you've got it both. So on your about section header, take out the whole thing here. I guess you can put false, true or false, but I'll save a few bytes. Take out all of that and just put in your nav element. And now I've got home. I can click on about. There's my about. I can go back to home. Click on contact. There's no contact. Either nothing will happen or it'll tell you error. There's no contact yet. So, save that. Any questions so far? Sure. It's still there. Content is, is right over here. Um, it used to be... Header. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not header. Uh, article. Content. Oh, okay. Um, you can you you could do it a couple of different ways. You one way was divs or spans. Uh, I don't believe there was a tag actually called wrap or wrapper, but it was using oftentimes a div. And this has taken over that because div was a generic container. And modern web design is we want to use the right tag for the right task. So there's a tag for article, for footer, etc. And so we're using the modern tags. Everything that we're doing here is jQuery mobile. Um, let's take a little digression here. Go to your web browser. And let's go to the font of all knowledge. Let's go to Wikipedia. 
wikipedia.org. Let's go to Wikipedia. If you don't know about it by now, Wikipedia is the free global encyclopedia, multilingual, just about on every article that matters um, in multiple languages. Go to Wikipedia and search at the bottom here jQuery Mobile. You might see jQuery, jQuery UI, jQuery Mobile. Select jQuery Mobile. Let's check out the jQuery Mobile article for a moment. <coughs> jQuery Mobile is a touch-optimized web framework, also known as a mobile framework. More specifically, a JavaScript library currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a wide variety of smartphones and tablet computers, made necessary by the growing but heterogeneous tablet and smartphone market. The jQuery mobile framework is compatible with other, other frameworks and platforms <coughs> such as PhoneGap, Worklight, and more. What this is saying is it's a, it's a template, it's a framework to get started, and it's compatible with other things such as PhoneGap, also <coughs> known as Cordova which is what we're going to talk about extensively next month. We're going to take this basic web project, use Cordova, also known as PhoneGap, and update it to be mobile-friendly. Uh, it's been around since 2010, and it's in internet time. The last version is kind of a while ago, October 2014, in internet time. There's stuff updates every week. So one version 150 is coming soon, and it uh, looks like it's about 142k MIT license, whatever. So you look, and what are the features? And it's HTML5 powered, something called AJAX. It's got widgets, UI widgets. It's compatible with all major desktop browsers as well as mobile platforms. So it's compatible on Android, iOS, Windows Phone, BlackBerry, etc. Here's um, examples more complex than we've dealt with this is more programmatic <coughs> when we had when we created the button right here when we did a href go to about another way to write it is is through some jquery you've got a button that when you tap on it you do something so that's javascript specifically jquery other things on our window when it loads do the following um, slide down, make an animation slide down of a list item. So, okay. And then if you look at basic example, there's a little bit about data role, data position, and such. And then we look at this example, which is what we just did. We created this Wikipedia example together from scratch. Yes, we could have copied it and pasted it all. But we learned it oh, from wow. scratch together. <laughs> nice. And now we know what it means. <laughs> and then if you go up to view history, guess who did it? <laughs> so the great thing about Wikipedia is that any crazy person can edit it. <laughs> And so I went in there last year, and I'm one of the maintainers here, unofficially, of this page, and I go in and I change it and stuff. And so I went in and I created this example for us in class, but for the whole world, to see um, that here's, Wiki, uh, here's uh, jQuery Mobile, and look how easy and, and cool it is to get something out of it. If you go back in time, the older examples were kind of janky. So now, um, this is our example, and we built it together, and now you should understand it sections and footers and all of that and as time goes on now I see we should update a few things so when I remember I'll log back in and I'll make it and I'll make those updates um, but um, this one over here I'm not touching that one I hate tables so um, but this article is our quick intro to jQuery mobile well if we want to look at everything about jQuery mobile Let's take another side look at jQueryMobile.com. Let's go back to the top and click jQueryMobile.com. And here's everything. Here's examples. Here's every line of code. Here's how it works. Here's documentation and, and demos and such. Um, here's where you download it for your own personal use and such. And other cool things. 
Um, let's, uh, I, I've been saying that we've got this list of icons. Let's look at that list of icons. Go to jQueryMobile.com and at the top click on Demos. Top bar here, click Demos. And we've got the latest version, so click on 145. The cool thing is that the jQuery Mobile documentation is built with jQuery Mobile. So everything that we're seeing here is jQuery Mobile, the basics, and then we can, uh, we can see that they practice what they preach. Scroll down into this content area, and on the right side, CSS Frameworks, we will see icons. This will show you all the icons and the code that you need for the icon. CSS Frameworks icons. There's what you can read about it and what it is, and here it is. So if we want the action icon, it's action. If we want this little warning thing, it's a word. Arrows. There's a little icon for a speaker. Audio. A back button. I would think of it more as an undo button bars and bullets, a calendar. That's great for my calendar app. It's great here, camera, when we're going to make our apps take photos. We've got an icon for it. All of these. My app is a messaging app. There's a messaging icon. Comment. If I don't like exactly how it's designed, the documentation here tells me how to design your own. If we scroll down somewhere... Uh, custom icons. There's no skull icon at the moment, but I can make my own skull icon. It shows me the code, view source, example, and then it's up to me to design my icon in Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, and check the code. Basically, I have to do like this. There's oftentimes a little HTML component and a CSS component. Oh, okay. And then so you open that little section, and then, okay, I also need to do this. My own icon, I have to do it like this. I can write that. I can kind of understand that. And I just need to create my own icons. So all the documentation is here. And this is a global project. No one company owns it. It's the jQuery mobile team. There's many people on it, and you can join the team and contribute and troubleshoot it, improve it, and so forth. It's open source. A team that created something for the betterment of everyone. Um, as we browse around, what can we do? <coughs> you will see examples. What about if I want to create tabs, or, or filterable search. We've got search at the top right, and I want to search here, I don't know, icon, and it gave me a result. We can do that with jQuery Mobile pretty easily. We look at, we look it up here, and then it'll give you the code, and then we, we apply it. So again, this site um, is made in jQuery Mobile. You can look at the source code of the site itself to also get insight into how did they do that? You're going to see the code. I'm seeing within the code <coughs> the role header. I'm seeing um, a responsive grid and all of that. We can spend a lot of time here, but we'll do one thing, then we'll take a break. Let's go back to our code. And let's go down to our About section. And we will uh, add a new attribute to section. We've got Data Role Page, ID About. Now, it does matter the order you put things in. Um, and I'll point it out when it really matters. Um, and I'll mention it here. In this case, in this case it doesn't matter. but I'm going to recommend that we always have, whenever we got an ID or a class, 
make it the very last thing, the very last attribute. You can have anything else, but either the class or ID, make it the last one, because oftentimes that really changes the look of an element. And so if you've got ID first and then other CSS, it might look weird. So we want to make sure ID or class is last. So let's back up before, the, before ID, and we will add data-theme equals B, the letter B. Save it and run it, and tell me what we did. I'm adding this to the About section. What did we do? Oh, wow. I have to change the background black. We changed the whole design of the About page, the About screen, the About section. Default design, I go to About. Cool design. Basic design, cool design, A and B. We can then set ourselves up with data theme C or D or whatever. When we program us our own CSS for C or for D or whatever, the point of that is I can have different screens have a different design, and they're attached to a data theme. Later on, we'll do that. Later on, we'll create our own cool colors, and actually, and and either override A or B, or create C, or D, all the way to Z, or Z, all the way to the last letter, we can create a different color scheme and apply it as necessary. And we can actually apply the color schemes to individual elements. We've applied data theme to the whole section, but if I had only applied it to the article, for example, only the article would change. Only the button, only the nav bar. But usually we're going to apply it at the, at the head at the section level so that it inherits all the way down. Yes? So could you have a data theme for your section and then a different one for your article as well? You could. Yeah, you could mix and match it, definitely. And uh, obviously we can look that up in the jQuery site and it'll tell us all about it. And so forth. But at the moment, we've got two screens full of content. We're well on our way. Look at how far we've gone. Gone in two weeks, four days, uh, and that's all HTML. We wrote it all ourselves. We just had a little bit of that leg up with jQuery Mobile Framework. We can still fully customize it and such. But at this point, let's take our break. When we come back, we'll do some more. It's 8:15. We'll be back at 8:25.